to the uh, training video on how to install Wildfly on a Windows machine, Windows 10 in particular, and how to connect it with IIS and have it seamlessly um, show the applications that you deploy on Wildfly through IIS as the web server, as the front end, so to speak. Uh, what you will need before we even get started, because I will not show that uh, in detail, is the installation of the JDK or Java SE. I have downloaded um, 8U66, and this is the 64-bit version of it, and already installed it on this machine. I have done so in the C Java directory. Uh, you will also have to set up your Java home environmental variable to that particular directory, and you can do so by um, pointing to environment variables, and I have done so for the whole system. Um, when you do so, please understand that you may have to reboot your machine for this to take hold. So I've pointed my Java home to where I've installed the Java JDK version uh, for myself here. And then further on, I have installed IIS, and uh, it is important that you install um, IIS as a program of feature here, but uh, you have to install certain um, elements of IIS, and that's first the management pieces as well the t as the tools and scripts. So you will have to install the IIS management console the script and tools um, that's on the services side, and then and just have a check mark here. It will install the default elements, and the installer for the remainder of the connections will install the rest. But if you want to go ahead and uh, get a little head start on the application development services side, you will have to install these things. Uh, again, if you haven't done that, um, the installation later on will take care of it. So the main things for us to do during IIS installations is the web management tools, the management console, so we can access it in a UI fashion and the script and tools that we'll need to manage it uh, later on. So just to test out that IIS is installed, uh, what we'll do is we'll use Microsoft Edge here and then just pull up localhost. Let's put an HTTP in front of it. Um, and just to see that we truly have internet information services running. Um, the next thing that we will do is download Wildfly. Uh, I have downloaded 902 final as a zip, and I would um, also encourage you to unzip it, which I've done already here. What we'll do with the unzipped uh, files from Wildfly is we'll just copy them into the um, drive root so we can work with it a little more easily. I will change the name here to Wildfly itself. Um, and then I will cut and paste it right here. That should give us all the files that we have um, downloaded. And we should be able to start it up by um, actually using a batch file. Oh, I'll fly bin, sorry. In the, that's located in the bin directory. The way I will do that is I will run the command prompt by hitting um, command here, just cmd. And that should be that. And then I will, in Windows 10, you can copy and paste, which is pretty cool. That works without having to use the mouse. Uh, sorry, CD, paste. And in here, standalone.bat should actually start um, the initial instance of Wildfly. And we'll just check in a second um, whether everything started up. So far, so good. Um, so let's go into open up a new tab, and you will access Wildfly not through localhost because that's where um, IS is running, but localhost 8080 will get you to a default page for Wildfly. Here we go, Wildfly 9 is running, and we are all happy. The administration console is going to use a different port, it's going to be 9990, but we haven't defined a user yet, so we can't access it, so it's going to complain about things. So uh, we will have to run through the process of creating a user. We do so by actually creating or running the batch file that uh, comes with Wildfly in the distribution, and that's the uh, setup user part. So what we'll do is we just flip back to our command prompt, stop it, uh, hitting Control-C, confirming it, and then we'll uh, really 
it's, I think it's the add user. So we just, yep, there it is. We're just going to say add user and walk through the prompts. We're going to add a management user. Um, and it's going to complain about my choices, but that's fine. Yes. Um, and we want to give it a password that we can remember. Uh, yes. Um, so we just say yes and yes. Uh -huh. And I'm just going to say yes here as well. Okay, we are done. Now let's start it again. And I'm just going to go to standalone that one more time, have it start up. And now we should be able actually to enter our admin user and log into the realm. Okay, let's see whether we can. Okay, so let's go back. Administration console. And so now. The good news is we had Wildfly running, but not quite the way we wanted to. So um, we will actually deploy an application here on Wildfly that I've downloaded as an example application to play with. As you see, there's a difference between the uh, web port for general use, um, uh, that's which was 8080, and the local host 9990, which is the administration or management port um, for Wildfly. We're going to use the management port to uh, deploy an application. So we're just going to hit start and um, I'm going to use a, a project um, here that's an open source project, a CFML from called Lucy and I'm just going to download the VAR distribution here, install a custom VAR and we are going to upload that to Wildfly as a, a new project. All right, let's do that. So we're going to hit this deployment button here and add. Um, we're going to um, upload a new deployment. And I downloaded it into the temp directory here. We're going to say open. And next. And we're going to accept the defaults. And this is going to process for us. As you see, we have uh, deployed the Lucy VAR successfully. Uh, now just check out our deployments. Here's, here it is. We can take a quick look at it from the management perspective and ensure that everything is good and running. And that's perfect. Um, so in order to access it using Wildfly's web port itself, what we need to do is we're going to go to the 8080 port again via localhost. And there's Wildfly, and Lucy should be in the subdirectory here, or subpath. It should start up. There it is. Doesn't look very pretty, but it's running. And we can also get to the Lucy administration via this particular um, URL. And obviously, I didn't do that quite right. It's actually slightly different. Uh, it's actually one more time, Lucy, Lucy. And it should, there you go. It should ask us for like a password for the administration of that sub project here for the deployment and boom, it works. However, our problem is when we go through IIS and type in Lucy, uh, we get nothing. So we still have to connect IAS and Wildfly somehow. But before we do that, uh, we want to do one more step on the um, uh, Wildfly side. We want to create it as a service. Um, and I take that back as well. I think, I think we need to explain how um, IAS and Wildfly are going to communicate. 
um, they are going to actually use a protocol called AJP. So if you just do a quick Google on, on that particular part, we can say AJP protocol. Um, you get an idea that it's, it's uh, a protocol developed by uh, Apache and it enables a server container like Wildfly to communicate to a web server. Uh, Wildfly already has all the hooks built in, but they are disabled. So what we'll do is we'll shut it down and enable those hooks. Then we will actually have to do uh, something on the IIS side to ensure that IIS can also talk this protocol because it's not there by default. We have to install protocol support for IIS and point it to Wildfly. And once that happens, IIS and Wildfly should be able to talk to each other successfully. So first things first, we will have to enable uh, stop Wildfly here and enable the AJP protocol. To do so, we have to um, change the standalone configuration file that governs the protocol connections and add support for it by adding a line to it. So let's go browse to our Wildfly and it should be in the configuration area for standalone. There should be something called standalone.xml. What we'll do is we'll open it with WordPad since it has a better formatting option for us. So, um, and find the line here that enables the HTTP protocol and right under it we'll actually um, put something uh, let me so let's do find it might be easier there you go right under here where we say HTTP listener uh, and I will copy and paste that but you can certainly type it all the way and we need to say that AJP listener is enabled as well so just add this line this particular line um, and the socket binding to AJP which is already defined further down in this file so we only need to um, add one reference to it and should work fine so we're going to save this so that's perfect that's the standalone XML but we also want to turn um, the Wildfly servlet container and application server into a service on Windows so the way we will do that particularly is inside the bin directory there should be a service directory so we're just going to go there and there should be a file or batch file uh, that's um, right there, service bat, and we should be just able to run it. Service, and we're just going to say install. And oh, yeah, we need to make sure it has permissions to do so. There you go. Now there should be a service called Wildfly in our services um, listing under Windows. So let's just do another refresh here. And there it is. It is not started. We can um, we can just make sure that it's it's not running as we are doing this. So if we go refresh, it should fail. Um, it may take a long longer because of not connecting. So there you go. We really don't get anything. Let's go to port 8080 just to be actually right here is port 8080. And we just refresh this and. Since nothing is running there, it should come back with some sort of error after a timeout. So all that stuff is nice and good, but um, what we really want to do is uh, start service. Well, I said we want to do a start a service. Let's see whether it started. Five. Why am I still running it? So currently we're not getting anything. Let's start um, Wildfly up here. Hit the start button. And if we do this right, it should start, hopefully, running. That's good. Let's see whether we can refresh it and actually get something. Boom, there you go. So now we have Wildfly running as a service. However, and if we go to Lucy here, just Lucy, that will start up the Lucy engine. Um, but when we go to under IIS, which is obviously under 10 here, Lucy, we still get a 404 error. So what we need to do is uh, download um, AGP support for IIS, and we will download the bond code connector for that. So we can just type in 
bond code connector and um, we should receive Tomcat IS, Tom .org as a destination and we can just click the download uh, project button here and that will download it for us and um, in my download location I have the project uh, should be right here for me. Um, oh, I think downloaded, copy. Let's move it up one directory, paste. Uh, one thing that we have to do since we downloaded from the internet under properties is we have to unblock it so we can use the files in there. Um, that's a Windows feature, security feature that um, is uh, supposed to be good for you, but in this case we actually need to unblock it so we can work with the files. What we'll do is we'll just extract all the files in the zip file. And then um, just call the connector setup and run it as administrator. And we'll say yes to that. And it may in your case, if you don't have support for ASP.NET, um, it will give you a warning that it might have to add it. Let it just do its default just by saying OK. Once that is done, just let's walk through this real quick. Accept the agreement. And we are going to just uh, accept most defaults. This is going to be correct. Uh, we're going to say yes to this. Uh, we're not going to change any of this for us. Um, I'm going to pick a specific site to install support on. If you say all IS sites, that's um, fine as well. If you have a single IS site that connects to a single Wildfly site or even multiple Wildfly sites, but everything on IS needs to connect. I want to choose a specific one. There's only one default website. I'm going to use that. And I'm going to only uh, enable JSP support for now. Uh, and you, I'm going to add the CFM, CFC support later on manually so you can see the distinction between the installer supported handler edition as well as the manual one. And I'm going to use this as well as the default. And I'm going to let it go ahead and install what it needs to do. Okay, it has finished. So let's uh, quickly check whether the connector got installed by uh, using uh, a connector call or version call address that you can do only on the server. So I'm just going to paste that in. That is the local host. And since we enable support for JSP handling, we're just going to use any type of JSP we like. I'm using a.jsp as an example. The important thing is to have a query parameter of bond code connector version equals true. And that should give us information whether the connector from the IIS side talking AGP is enabled. So in, in this case, it's looks like it is. So let's see what um, what happens when, when we go to localhost, um, which is using IAS, right? So we'll just, uh, let's do this here, localhost. So IAS is, ah, if I do this right, HTTP, localhost without anything else. So there you go, there's IAS. And if I say Lucy here, it should actually not quite work because we haven't added one thing that we needed to do. Since we want to only um, direct calls that go to the Lucy path to Wildfly and nothing else from IIS, we have to add something manually. Um, and the, the simple thing to do here is uh, to find the IIS directory for documents, which is normally inetpub www root. Um, and uh, in here, we're just going to add a new folder, just empty Lucy. That is going to correspond to the same URL path that Wildfly would understand, because both both sites need to communicate effectively using the AGP protocol. They are transferring back and forth URL elements that both have to resolve. So IAS has to resolve it correctly, as well as Lucy, I'm sorry, um, the Wildfly has to resolve it correctly and both have to resolve Lucy. While Wildfly has a reference because we deployed the project there, IAS did not. So another thing that we will do is um, in this area here using the IAS manager, we will um, add a handler for Lucy for the directory. Let me see here. 
and we do so by going right into um, the handler feature and add a managed handler and we are going to pick bond code um, that we just installed here. The request pass is important. We are going to route everything that ends with an extension CFM to wild flight for the Lucy engine to process. The Lucy engine normally process any, processes anything that is an extension of CFM. We will give it a name, bone code, CF, CFM handler, and request restrictions. We're going to remove this. This will disable IIS from checking whether a path really exists from the IIS perspective because we won't have IS checking anything in that regard. We will um, send everything to Wildfly and Lucy uh, to uh, process it. So we want the request restriction to uncheck that, checking for files or folders to be existing. There you go. Now we have enabled this. We could have done that initially with the bunk code installation process, but I wanted to show you guys how uh, adding the handler in a sub area of IIS on the sub side um, can 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 work. So let's go to IIS and see whether we can now pull up something there. Oop, forbidden. That is not good. I think we don't have it quite right. Okay, I've just recycled the um, application pool because of our changes and I'm just going to recall it again. Um, the Lucy, oops. Sorry, that's my mistake since I didn't provide a CFM extension. There we go. Um, so as you see, we can actually um, pull the Lucy deployed application that we deployed on Wildfly from the IIS side, and IIS communicates correctly uh, with Wildfly to do so. So I think admin server, that was the other one that we defined on the Wildfly side, and that should pull up something as well. And um, there you go. So the, both elements are communicating with each other. At the same time, when I um, pull up just localhost, it should be IAS. So we have a clear understanding that only when we uh, go to a subpath labeled Lucy will we be able to, or are we going to transfer information to Wildfly and get information back so that it corresponds to the deploy deployed project there and um, so we, we can have a mixture of architectures that we expose through IIS. We can have ASP.NET applications that live uh, in concert with Wildfly applications. Um, obviously if, if you want to use a, a, through a just a pass-through for, for example when you have servlets uh, you, you, you normally use a wildcard kind of handling. There's facilities for that as well. There's other documentation in previous videos that show that. I wanted to show you a slightly different path. Hope that was um, informative enough for you and you can uh, make progress deploying IIS application, uh, applications um, through IIS on Wildfly. I'm, 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 I'm kind of rambling here, but I meant to say Wildfly application through IIS. The things that you needed to download again, just to look at our download directory uh, under temp. Um, you, need, you needed to install the JDK. You needed to download Wildfly and expand it and deploy it on, on an, any directory on your machine. And then what we've also done is we have enabled AJP support for uh, Wildfly by changing the standalone configuration file. Um, then we made Wildfly a service using the service batch file that was included in the distribution. Um, then we downloaded support for AJP for, uh, in IIS or on IIS using the bond code connector. We downloaded that from bond code uh, or Tomcat IIS.reaforge.org and we ran the installation there. We then added a manual handler for bond code um, to handle CFM extensions and pass them on. To Wildfly, so we did quite a bit, a bit of thing, uh, quite a few, quite a few things, and hopefully you can from uh, now independently configure IS to communicate with Wildfly and deploy your application in that fashion. Thanks, and have a great uh, day.